600 WMT gets your motor started and revs up your engine every Saturday morning at 10 on the My Car Geek Hour, brought to you by Castle Motors. Hey, that's us. That's us. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's you. Me. I'm just here oh, to run the you're board. Just, you're just here to run the board? Yep. Nah, you got it. I'm pushing buttons and moving faders. Yeah, there you go. You're here to make it all work work and be cool. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, as long as you got me Beach Boy music today. You know what? I do. Ah, good deal. Good deal. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Jay? I'm absolutely awesome. All right. You know, it's the sun is shining. And, yes, and finally. I grabbed one of my Thunderbirds this morning and oh, put yeah? the top down and came on over and it's oh, life so you got it good. parked outside? Yeah, so oh. Thunderbird and Beach Boys on the, on the radio, I'm all set. <laughs> so you are ready to go. I'm ready to roll. And we're ready to go here. Yeah. You know, most importantly, we're ready for your phone calls. Jay is here. We, he wants to help you out. We want to we wanna see if we can help fix some cars today or motorcycles, RVs, whatever you got. You Anything. Know, it's, that's, uh, that's the fun of it is um, I've played around with everything, and I just I, I enjoy it all. Yes. I have fun with it. And, you know, this is my second week here working with you on the show, and I learned a ton last week. And you do. You dabble in it all. I, I try to play with everything. You know, it's, and it's fun. You've got an answer for pretty much every question. And if not, you're going to find that answer mm -hmm. for them. If, if not, we'll find it out. I, yep. don't, I don't know everything, but we, we, we research it and have a lot of fun. And um, I get to play with the cars all day long, so that's, mm -hmm. that's fun. That's the exciting part. So, uh, numbers to get a hold of us here, those are the important things, 365-0600, yes. 1-800-332-5401, or star 600 on your U.S. cellular phone. Those are the numbers to get a hold of us. Please give us a call here this morning, and uh, if you got a question for Jay, and go ahead and ask it, and he's going to do what he can to help you yeah, out. Yeah, we'll see if we can figure it out and answer your question and, and solve some problems. But uh, why don't you go ahead and give us the location, phone numbers, and hours of um, Castle Motors for us here. Um, that's awesome. Uh, we're on the corner of 16th Avenue and Williams Boulevard, right next to the great, big, beautiful Tysons. Um, I don't know if you've been in there lately, but it's it's really cool inside. So they did some remodeling. And oh, inside that one? Inside Tysons, yeah. On I don't side. think I've been in there since oh, they've man, redone it. It's, it's awesome. So 396-2698, and the beautiful Shelly will put you through to whoever you want. Um, our hours, you know, the service is open from 7 till 9, Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, 7 till 6 on uh, Friday and 8 to 5 on Saturday. Um, and then sales is open uh, um, 8 to 9, Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5, or 8 to 6 on Thursday, or Friday, and um, 8 to 5 on Saturday. Boy, I'm all confused this morning. <laughs> <coughs> Can't even think when we're open. No. Looks like we got some calls coming we in. We do. Let's take this some is calls. great. Let's awesome. go ahead, get to some phone calls here. Let's go ahead and start on our 800 line. We've got Ruth in East Moline this morning. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning. Quick question on oil changing. Some of yes. the newer cars now have the, you know, like the percentage, 70%, 60%. What yep. is that really telling me? That is calculating with the the mileage that is preset into the computer where okay. how much the oil life is. I and mean, used to be you had some of them that the cars, they, they would, you'd set your intervals on the computer at, 5,000 miles, and then all of a sudden the light would whoop, it'd come up and say, change your oil, and they're like, oh, my gosh, i got to change my oil right now. Now some, right. some of them are giving it to where it's giving you an idea that, hey, it's 70%, so you think, oh, wait a second, I probably need to, but 70%, it's it's good, but, you know, you get down to 20%, it's like, oh, you know what, I probably ought to, let's see, I'm going to be off next Thursday, I need to get an oil change. So as the percentage decreases, the quality of my oil is decreasing also? Correct. Yep. Okay. 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 <laughs> and is there like, uh, like you said, 70%, and eh, I'm still a little okay, but oh, as seven, I, 70 at what way point, down. you know, go ahead. still look at, um, depends on the type of driving you do. Um, okay. You know, still look at how many miles you're putting on it. Don't, don't just go by the computer on it. Still look okay. at, still look at my miles. If I'm a more in town type driver, um, right, which I, I am. Okay, then I want to see that oil out of there every three thousand miles. You do still. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. Even if your light or your even if that gauge still says seventy percent. Yeah. Even if that still says seventy percent, um, I still okay. want I want that out of there at uh, okay. three thousand miles. Because the oil is getting dirty, and therefore it's, the quality of your vehicle is not. It, it okay. gets it gets dirty. Um, if you're an in-town driver, it's not getting up to temperature enough to 
um, dissipate any moisture that's in there. And okay. you're also, you're on the cold idle circuit more, so there's a chance of the fuel getting a little more gas in it. And um, okay. So, yeah, if you're in town, okay. I'd like every 3,000 miles, please. Okay, sounds good. Thanks awesome. very much. Hey, thanks All for right. calling in. Mm-hmm. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ruth. And that's always important. It's kind of one of those little things I think a lot of people overlook. Everybody overlooks oil changes. That oil that's change, a bad deal. But it's one of the more important things to that's keep the maintenance most up in car. Thing. That's right. All right, so let's go ahead and get to uh, some more phone calls here. We've got uh, Steve in Cedar Rapids this morning. Good morning, You're breaking Steve. breaking this computer again. Doggone. Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good. Um, first of all, I want to say that I bought a couple cars from Castles, and they've always treated me very well, and I appreciate that. And I have a Ford F-150 pickup that I think my teenage son tried to go through a creek with it. Uh-oh. And uh, I have... Uh, I think what is going on is the actuator for my four-wheel drive is starting to chatter and clatter. Are, is there one on both sides? I think I'm going to have to bring it out to you guys to take a look at it. But uh, all of a sudden, I'll just hear this god-awful clattering noise, and then it'll just go away and all of a sudden, and then it'll not do it for a long time, and then it comes back on again. Really? It's a, cl- yeah. it's a clattering in the suspension? Well, it sounds like it's coming in. Yeah, well, one time it sounds like it's coming from the left wheel, and then the next time it sounds like it's coming out of the right wheel. Okay. I, I, te- I checked my wheel bearings, and it, I think my right wheel bearing is getting a little weak because I can feel just a little bit of wobble in the front wheel when I have it jacked up and, you know, try to rock that wheel back and forth. Okay. Now, do you notice this more at slower speeds or higher speeds? Uh, it seems like it doesn't really start happening, Jay, until it gets up to about 45 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah, we got something there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there are some different actuators in there, and it sounds like we got one that's that's malfunctioning or um, doing some stuff. Usually, what you can do, the other thing you can do on that to see whether it's actually in the four wheel drive, is when it starts to chatter. What I would do is I'd put it in four wheel drive, even on the dry pav- the dry pavement. You can do that with that truck. Just make sure you're okay. off. Make sure you're off the gas, and put it in four wheel drive and see if it goes away. And that's gonna okay. that's gonna help to tell you whether that's that's your issue or not. So now, if I do engage that and it is uh, act or performing correctly, will that my, will my light show on my dash that it has engaged the four wheel drive? Yeah. Yep. But okay. like I said, just let up on the gas, put it in four wheel drive, and um, you know, then you know, I always count to three, and you'll feel it kind of clunk in and right. and see if it goes the noise goes away if it does you know take it back out of four wheel drive and um and let me know on that we can get her fixed okay up. i'll do that and then uh, another part of the question on that yeah. wheel, but when, when i grab that wheel and i feel just that real little bit of wobble isn't that kind of the same thing you try to do to test the ball joint also yeah um ball joint you're going to want to do um a little more intensely than that um you're going to do that for a tie rod end to see if it's loose there um, a ball joint you're going to grab on top and bottom and see if you got some play there. Um, but sometimes what you have to do is you're going to have to take the the preload off the suspension to really test the ball joint properly. So you'll okay. need a, a board and a, and a bar to, to test the ball joint properly. Well, you'll probably be hearing from me later this week, and I appreciate your time. Not a problem. <laughs> I appreciate the compliments. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Thanks. Right. Yep. Thanks, Steve. All right, let's keep things going here. More phone calls. I know, Jay, you're just I'm, to get I, these I'm phone loved, calls. I love phone calls. Who do yes. we got next? All right, we're going to go to Dean now in Dubuque in this Dubuque. morning. Yep. Awesome. Good morning, Dean. Hi, how are you today? I am absolutely awesome. How about you? Good. Uh, I've got a 98 Volkswagen Jetta. Okay. Um, the car runs good, but once in a while, the car will um, just die. It makes like a, like a burp sound, and then it'll kill. Okay. And I start it again, and it runs fine. But it does this every other day or so, and I can't figure out what it could be. So you're you're driving along, all of a sudden it just makes a burp sound and, and dies. Yep, then you start it, and it runs fine. Hmm, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, I know. It's been doing it for like four months now. Right. Well, with it, with it, it starts up instantly right away, no problem, right after it dies, right? Yep. Okay, that's going to tell me more that it's not an electrical problem. Because usually, if a if we have a sensor that's going bad, a cam sensor or a crank sensor, um, mm-hmm. they'll they'll shut off the car and until they cool down, they won't restart. So I would. I had the crank sensor replaced <clears throat> in December on it. Yeah, that that wasn't your problem. 
Um, uh-huh. That's why I say it's, it sounds to me like we have a fuel or an air issue. Um, mm-hmm. So I would be, I would start in looking at my throttle body, um, looking at my air cleaner. Um, okay. I've had, I've had some of those that the, the air tube that goes from the air cleaner to the throttle body will get a, um, a crack in it and will cut right. and will cause some different uh, situations like that. So when you pull that off, inspect that real good, you know, bend it around a little bit and make sure there's no cracks or holes in it. Okay. Um, and I'd look at that throttle body and clean that all up real good. Um, my next thing would be is I need to get a fuel pressure gauge on it, and let's look at our fuel pressure. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so any, any mechanics around here could do that? Yeah, definitely. Okay, and i got one last question. Um, okay. The, the, on the driver's side door, the, the lock, yeah. you know, the latch, yep. you have to pull the panel off to replace that latch because the latch won't latch anymore. Inside the door, yes, you have to pull, yeah. the, door, you have to pull the door panel off. Okay. Have you tried Have you tried lubricating it? No, I never did. Okay, take and uh, take some WD forty or something like that there, uh, and uh-huh. spray into that latch real good, and then okay. take a take a screwdriver and activate that latch, and you use your door handle and go back and forth a few times and see if you can uh, get that done la- or get it to work in that way. Oh, okay. It'll save me one hundred fifty bucks. There you go. Try that. Oh, well, thanks for your help. No problem. All right. Mm-hmm. Bye. Thanks, Dean. Bye. You know, I had an issue like that with a latch on an old Monte Carlo I had that when it got really cold in the winter, it would lock and freeze in the closed position. Yep. So I'd go to shut the door, and it would just hit the striker bolt. Yep. <laughs> so lubrication on everything. You know, um, engine oil is is the life of your engine. But, you know, all these working components, door hinges, door latches, they all need to be lubricated every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So. All right, let's go ahead and get to some more phone calls here. Awesome. Go to Mark. Uh, <clears throat> he's driving on our hero line this morning. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, fellas. Good morning. Drive safely, please. Yep. Uh, I got a motorcycle question, a dirt bike question for you. Could okay. You help me out with that? I'll give it my best shot. Okay. I bought this YZ uh, 125. It's a 2002. Uh, the person said it run fine. Yeah. Um, it was just stuck in gear. Um, so I'm wondering uh, if you think that's a a transmission issue or possibly a clutch issue. Um, I did pull the clutch basket off of it, and it looks in good condition. Everything looks great on that side. No shavings in there or anything. So right. I think maybe it's on the on the tranny side. Like, what could it possibly be over there? Well, definitely, you know, we could have a – there's shifting forks in there and stuff that, you know, you could have something that's, that's jammed up there. You're sure the motor's not locked up, though, too, right? Yep, yep, absolutely. That's one of the first things I did, pull the exhaust off, make sure. Uh, and right now, once I took the clutch basket off, um, it seems like it's, it's shifting fine for me now. I just, I'm not sure if I should go ahead and pull that tranny off and check all the gears, because to do that, i got to pull the head and everything off. So Right, so it, it's working fine now? It seems like it's, sh- it's shifting, but it's, it's like one of the gears... It's stuck between two gears, yeah, most likely. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. You're gonna need to pull that apart and see what you got there. But you're gonna find you're gonna find a uh, shift fork that's bent that's making the the two gears. I mean, it's trying to activate two gears. So. Okay. Okay. That's kind of what I was figuring, but. Yep. But I throw that out there and see if there was any other simpler possibilities. That, nope. It sounds to me like it's gonna have to come apart. So, okay, guys. Okay, thanks a lot. thank right. you. All right, thanks for the call this morning, Mark. Uh, 365-0600-1800-332-5401, star 600 on our U.S. cellular phone. Those are the numbers to get a hold of us. Uh, we've got uh, Earl and Loudon and Ann in Cedar Rapids on hold. If you just want to stay with us here through the break, we'll get to you as soon as we come out. Oh, we got to go to break? Yeah, got to pay hate, the bills. I hate breaks. Got to pay the bills. Okay, All right, stay we'll with us. Be back here in a few minutes, 600 WMT. There you go. You asked. You got, you got it down now. Had a baby. You asked. Good I deal. delivered. Little yeah. Beach Boys coming back. There you go. Cool. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead. Uh, it's uh, Jay Castle here, the Castle Motors Car Geek Hour and 600 WMT. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it, get to more of your phone calls. We've awesome. got uh, Earl. He's been patiently waiting for us in Loudon this morning. Good morning, Earl. Good morning. Good morning. How are I you? I have uh, impact uh, water pump. Pumps water out of your 
or cisterns. Okay. I like to sell it at a reasonable price. Okay. It's practically brand new. Cool. Okay. You well, don't need it if you get high water. There you go. Hopefully we won't we won't I have any high water. Have, I also have. Hey Earl. Uh, Earl, were uh, you trying to call in to buy, sell, or trade? That was last hour. Well, that's what I was calling for. Okay, yeah. we're sorry. This is so, a, this th- is the car geek hour. You got yeah. any car questions? Got any problems with your car? No. 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 Well, that's good that you don't have any problems, but. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, well, then I'll let you alone then. Okay. okay. We'll talk to you later. You All have right. fun today. Thanks, Earl. Earl. He's a little, about an hour too late for that phone yeah. call, I oh, think. Well. Oh, we well. always like that, though. Yeah. What the heck? We got uh, Mike in Cedar Rapids. Yeah, we do, though. Let's go ahead and talk to Mike. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Mike. Um, I've got a 207 F-150 Ford pickup, and uh, the passenger side outside mirror It'll go up and down, but it won't go in and out. And the driver's side works fine. So uh, what do you – That's is bad wiring or what? Um, we'd want to check the wiring first, make sure you don't have a broken wire in that door. Okay. Um, but most likely it's it's in the mirror itself. Since one oh. si- since the other side does uh, works fine, Yeah. Um, it's going to be in that mirror if it's not a broken wire. Okay. Is that something that uh, I have to take to the shop and have them look at? Cause... Depends on how mechanically inclined you are. No, not that much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're, you're going to want to take it to a shop and have them check it out. Okay, that's fine. I appreciate that. Do you do work like that? Yes, we do. Okay, appreciate it. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. All right, thanks for the call, Mike. All right, so. Okay, we got some lines open We right do now. have some lines open, so please give us a call here, 365-0600, 1-800-332-5401, star 600 on your U.S. cellular phone. Jay's Otherwise, you know, you know what today is? Saturday. Yeah, it's but Saturday. You know what Saturday is, right? It's Super Saturday. No. no. Super Saturday is the last of the month. Oh. Uh, yeah. The, today is Insane Saturday. Insane Saturday. Insane Saturday. Because what we got is, uh, unfortunately, Greg is gone today, Sales, the general sales manager. He's gone okay. today. So Gerald and myself and all the sales staff and Pat, we're on the floor. So I'll, I'll be on the, on the floor um, helping helping customers get great deals on cars today and selling cars and and running back and forth to the service and everything. So um, I brought my, my comfortable shoes, and I'm ready to work. Mm-hmm. So we're going to uh, – Gerald says that uh, it's Insane Saturday. He's got insanely great deals today. Um, he's got uh, minivans on special today too. Um, he's got everything when it comes to minivans. He's got the Chrysler, Ford. Uh, um, he's even got handicapped vans. Oh. He's got the handicapped assist where it's got the ramp that comes out of it and everything. So um, he's got great deals on him today. So All right. looks like we got some calls coming. We in. do. We got some calls coming. This is great. So let's go to uh, Marcus and Elgin this morning. Good morning, Marcus. Morning. Good morning. How are you? I got a, I got a 2001 Dodge Ram with the gas engine. Okay. Perfect. Uh, it 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 pings under load. Uh huh. Kind of driving driving me nuts a little bit tried uh i've tried some things at the dealer and I've tried different gases and stuff and uh wondering if you had any ideas um do you have a um i gotta think here for a second i, I lost my train of thought there for a minute um is check engine light ever come on no okay. no it doesn't okay we need to look and see um what it's doing for sure the, that should have a knock sensor on it to eliminate the ping and there's a pretty good chance that knock sensor has gone bad. Um, so we want to look at that there, because um, if if fuel if you've done fuel and everything else and haven't cured it, um, I, uh, what year did you say it was? Two thousand one. Two thousand one. Um, it seems to do it when it's warm and not when it's cold. Okay. Um, is so. there any is there any restrictions in the exhaust? That would be my next thing too. Um, if I'm if I got a converter that's partially plugging up, um, that could definitely with with saying that once it warms up, um, that converter is getting to where it's if it's halfway plugged up. When the converter gets, g- converter gets hot, it'll plug up even more, and um, that will cause your problem there too. So all right, that's a couple things I can try. Sounds great. Thank you. All right. All right. 
Thanks for the call this morning, Marcus. Let's get to another phone call here and go to uh, Tom, Tom in Coal in Valley, Illinois. Illinois. Yep. You know where Coal Valley is? I do not. I think I do. We'll find out in All a right. second. Tom, you there? Yes, sir. Where, yeah. Where's Coal Valley at? Coal Valley is a suburb of uh, Moline. Yep. Oh, okay. okay. Yep, yep, yep. I've been there. Okay. Right there at the Quad City Airport. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a 2004 GMC Yukon XL. Okay. It's all wheel drive. Yep. Back in December, the transmission went out of it. Yep. I bought another transmission with a converter in it. Uh huh. And had it installed. Perfect. Okay. Well, I had the transmission works great. It's good, strong transmission, shifts properly. Yeah. But when you're sitting at a stoplight, uh huh. And you have your foot on the brake, and when its car is idling in gear or out of gear, you can take it out of gear, and it's a little bit less, but it it still has this little vibration in it. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of inclined to believe that it's either in the valve body or maybe in the, isn't there some uh, like clutches in the torque converter or? Right. Um, how many miles does it have on it? The, well, it the truck has 151,000, but okay. I just had the transmission put in there, so it right. It, it, and the transmission was uh, approximately in 100,000 miles. Right. I bought it from Salvage Yard. Now. Um, are we sure we don't have a transmission mount or a motor I, mount that's that's, uh, that's? I had a I had a new transmission mount, and also I had all three uh, transmission lines replaced at the time. Okay. Put all new in it. Yeah, I don't I don't know that you got a valve body or clutch problem there. Um, mm-hmm. I th- I think we got something that's uh, touching somewhere is what it sounds well, like to me. I took it into the shop and the lines were touching a little bit. They moved them away. Right. Uh, the the tube where they you put the uh, dipstick in for yep, it. Yep. Yep. The bracket on that they had twisted it when they torqued it down. Okay. And I and they straightened that out. That didn't seem to help any. Uh, it still does it. Okay. Uh, I had a new filter put in it and all new oil, of course. Yeah, no, that's, I, I think you're, uh, that part there is not your problem. I it still w- think you got, you got some exhaust, you got something there that's somewhere something's touching. Okay, let me ask you this. Yeah. What is, what is the, the approximate uh, RPMs? I mean, it's a 5.3 engine. Right. What is the, the approximate RPMs for uh, that engine when it's in gear? Um, it's prob- just idling. probably somewhere between that six to eight hundred RPM is where it's going to be idling, probably. Uh-huh. Okay. So, um, but you know, like I say, I've had new transmission mount, new transmission lines put on it, and it, you know, it works great. It's just annoying. Yeah, you should be able to put it up on a hoist, um, preferably a drive-on hoist, uh-huh. with somebody in the car. And uh, start touching and and moving stuff around underneath and eliminate the noise and you're gonna find okay. it. All right, no, so. I'm checking check that. Yep, so. have them check okay, all that thank out. You. No thank problem. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. You guys got a nice show. Thank, thank you. All right. Thank Bye. you. Yep. Thanks for the call this morning, Tom. Yeah. yeah. Anytime, anytime you have something that you know you didn't have the vibration or you didn't have the noise, and then after you get it back from the shop, you need to go right back to right back to that vicinity where you're at to see i mean because it it happens you know exhaust gets bent just a little bit when it's coming out because sometimes after one hundred and fifty thousand miles stuff doesn't just drop out nice and easy <laughs> so um cool so let's we got more callers yeah, we do we've got uh, let's go to our hero line we've got andy up in waverly this morning good morning andy good morning good morning i've got a 2004 chevy malibu okay and I've been having some problems with the keyless entry in it. Okay. If you get the keyless entry right next to the door, like the keyhole, basically, yeah. then it, if you hold down on the button for a long time, then it finally will unlock. Okay. Um, I've changed the battery in it, and I've checked the fuses in the car, but haven't seemed to fix the problem. Okay. Most likely, you got a remote that's going bad. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can take, and on those there, you can take it apart like you did with the, for doing the battery. Yep. Um, look at all your connections where the the um, terminals were that touch the battery for the positive and negative. Yep. Look at yep. those real close in that printed circuit board. Sometimes you'll get a loose one. I uh, think I did that, and I don't think I could see anything that was loose in there. Is okay. there anything else that and then, it could it just be a, the remotes going bad in general? It or? could be the remotes going bad in general. I normally okay. take the other side apart then, and uh, with the little eraser, 
I'll take and I'll clean up the terminals, you know, on yep. the, the rubber pad and, yep. and on the other, try that there too. But okay. most likely you got a loose connection in there. Okay. So, okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks, Andy. All right, 365-0600-800-332-5401-star-600 uh, on your U.S. cellular phone. Those are the numbers to get a hold of us. Uh, give us a call here. If you got a question for Jay, he's um, more than willing, ready, willing, and able. He wants to help you. Well, I don't know about able, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than willing. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun with so, it. All right, so we'll get to your phone calls more. I know we've got Don on hold. If he just wants to hold on through the break here for us, we'll get to him as soon another as we come break? back. Yep, we got to do something another. about these breaks. <laughs> got to pay the bills somehow. All right, we'll be back with more 600 WMT. Beach Boys. There you go. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll we got a bunch of callers in we here. We do today. have a bunch of callers. I'll make sure to get more Beach Boys music. There you go. Let's get these callers here. Yep. We're going to start with uh, Don in Coggin. He's been waiting patiently. He's been waiting very patiently. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Jay. What can we do hey, for you today? We really enjoy your show. Thank you. Uh, I've got a 2004 GMC Envoy. Okay. XL. Okay. When I bought it, it had all the bells and whistles on it. Perfect. Uh, it's got a air compressor in the back. It's uh, got airbags on it. Yep. And it's uh, even got a place where you you hook a hose on that's with it. Blow uh, up your basketball or whatever uh, air mattress. Blow your lawnmower tires and stuff, and I use that quite frequently. Okay. But... Uh, and the inflators, the airbags still work, but my uh, auxiliary hose, the switch, won't turn it on. Okay. Uh, would that would that be fused someplace in behind there? That should be fused. It probably wouldn't be in behind there, but in if it's fused, it's going to be in with um, somewhere in the fuse panel, and it may be yeah, con- I, it yeah, may be I, connected to a different uh, something else also. Um, but if not, then I would say we got a switch that went bad. Well, that's what I'm thinking, and it looks to me like if to get to the switch, the only way to get to it is to take this whole side panel off. Yeah, you can you can actually loosen that side panel and move it out of the way just enough to to get back behind there. So. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, that's what I was wondering because uh, with the compressor still working. Yep. Uh, I thought maybe there'd be a uh, fuse between the switch and the compressor. But. Uh, most likely there's not a fuse between the switch and the compressor. Yeah. So, um, in, in, the fuse, in the fuse bank, if that fuse was blown, I'd think the compressor, the compressor would. wouldn't work. Correct. Yep. So I would say you got a switch problem. We need to pull that apart and uh, take a current tester and, and check, make sure you got juice up to it. Because you could have a broken wire there too, but... Um, uh, that's where, that's where I would go. Yeah. yeah, I use that hose quite a bit. Perfect. Often those are handy on those. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sounds thanks, great. Jay. No mm-hmm. problem. Thank you. Stop you down can. and see me sometime. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for the call this morning, Don. Let's get to more of your phone calls here. We've got Frank in Cedar Rapids this morning. Good morning, Frank. Good morning. Thanks Good mo- for taking my call. Hey, thanks for calling. I have an 06 Ford Taurus. Okay, my favorite I car. Have- I guess an idling problem. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, when I uh, shift from neutral, I mean from park to reverse, I do not have to step on the foot feed to start moving. Okay. I have to step on the brakes to keep from moving too fast. Okay. I had it in the shop. Okay. They blew out lines or something, but still does that. They say the uh, the RPM, nothing wrong with that. Okay. No problem. Um, is it when you you first start up the car and you put oh, it in reverse? Oh, anytime, anytime, time, anytime you start the car and take it out of park and put it in either reverse or drive. You, if you do not have your foot on the foot on the brake, you take off. Okay. Um, yeah, we got something there. Um, Idle air control valve sounds like that could be sticky, and that's a a unit that can be cleaned. Well, that's what I think happened. That they cleaned. Okay. I had it done when I was snowbird down in florida but still does it huh yeah we need to be looking at that throttle body and air idle air control solenoid um the now if you let it sit and run for just a second and then put it in gear does it does it still same do that thing okay it's always the same thing okay um no check engine light right no check engine light okay 
Yeah, we, we need to be looking at that. I'll bet you they didn't get the idle air control valve cleaned out. So what do, what's that run? Um, that's not too bad a deal. You know, you're going to be looking probably an hour's worth of labor, which is $99. So um, that's not a big deal. All righty. Okay. All right, thanks for your Sounds information. Sounds good. Hey, thanks for calling in. Bye. All right. All right. Thanks for all your phone calls. Every, everybody, everybody always talks about thanking me for the show, but thank them. I want to thank them for calling. I love the callers. The, yeah. the, the WMT people are awesome. So Every caller is different. That's that, what's great that's about right. it. That's right. Let's not keep these last two call, wait, no, waiting. We're going to go to uh, Bill in Iowa City now. Good morning, Bill. Bill, you with us? Hey, Bill. Hello. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you now, buddy. All right. Had it on mute. Darn it. Um, hey, I, I really love your show. I, I listen every week. Thank I you. you. Um, I've got a uh, 2003 uh, Mitsubishi Eclipse. Okay. Uh, I bought it when it was almost new, so I've had it almost the entire time. Uh, okay. Since it was new. Uh, after I had it for about four or five years, it started making a little lifter noise. Uh-huh. Really, really, like in the morning when it's cold. It's right. Cool enough. And I took it to my mechanic, and he said, I don't worry about it. You know, it, that's no big deal. So uh, a number of years went by, and in the last two years, it started to make a lot more noise. Okay. Uh, just, just when it's cold. You know, it goes for longer, you know. It used to quiet down after about 30 seconds. Now, I, I believe it or not, I've discovered if I, let, if I let it run for about 30 seconds, shut it off, and then turn it back on, yeah. the ignition, uh, it's quiet. Okay. So... so but it's really noisy. Otherwise, the car just runs perfect. It's, I've never had an engine problem with it. What uh, the first place I or the thing I would do on that there um, is I would um, I always put a, at least a half a quart of transmission fluid in my in my oil change on my own personal. Really? Yep, uh, transmission fluid is real high detergent and will help clean the inside of the engine. Um, Put a. I would go out and add a half a quart of transmission fluid to it. You'll be half a quart over full. That won't hurt it. Um, okay. Put a half a quart of transmission fluid in it. And how close to an oil change are you? Well, I just had it done a few weeks ago, okay, but perfect. I got no problem with. No, no, no. You don't have to change it again. I was just checking to see. Um, but yeah, put a half a quart of tranny fluid in it, and and run it here, and I think you'll find within about two weeks your noise starts going away. Nice. Okay. Well, that's a- so you don't think I've got engine trouble? I, uh, from the sounds of it, if your technician's listening to it and he's not concerned about it, um, you know, the, the overhead cams will make a little bit of noise. Uh, you'll get a little lifter noise there. And they do. They run hotter. And so we have a little more chance of uh, oil residue, that type of stuff, up in the, in the upper end, which will make it to where it clicks just a little bit for first thing in the morning. Um, where he's, he doesn't seem to have the big concern on it, I would... Um, I'd do this transmission trick with it, transmission fluid, and always do this when, every time you change the oil, and that'll help keep it clean then. Well, that's great news. Thank you so much. No that's problem. Give that a try. Thank you. All right, sir. Have a great day. You too. All right. Bye. Have a good Thank you for the phone call this morning, Bill. Uh, we've got another caller here, Shannon in Blairsburg this morning. Good morning, Shannon. Good morning. Is that Blairsburg or Blairstown? Blairsburg. Where's Blairsburg at? It's probably about 30 to 40 miles north of Ames. Okay, cool. Sounds awesome. Have, What's my up? question is, I have an, just recently bought uh, an 01 F350 Dually with a 7.3 diesel. Ooh, that's an awesome truck. Good um, job. When I drive it, I can drive it one day, be just fine. The next day I can get into it, drive it where I want to go, get out, go back into it. It will not go into drive. It'll go in reverse, no problem, but it won't go through any of the drive gears. Really? You let, it, let it sit for a day. Two days, maybe get back into it. You can drive it down the road and do just fine again. Okay, I assume you've checked the transmission fluid. Yep. And it's clean and full. Yep. Okay. Uh, the neutral safety switch—they had a lot of problems with those on the on the side of the transmission. Okay. Um, what it is? It's a computer-controlled transmission, and they had a lot of issues. The I I call it the Prendel switch. I mean, park, reverse, neutral, drive. Um, but what it is, is it's when you put it in gear, that switch sends a signal to the computer. It says, okay, I'm going to drive, and and then activates the, the solenoids and the transmission to go into drive. Um, now, one, 
one time when I got it, I tried to go into it. If I put it clear down in the low, yep. you can feel the truck like wanting to surge to go. Yep. But if I, put, if I give it gas, it's just like it's sitting in neutral. Yep. It's confused. Okay. Um, it's And change that change that new, uh, neutral safety switch on the side of the transmission. It's it's a real easy deal to do. I mean, are you mechanically inclined at all? Yeah. Okay. It's real easy. I think it's a 13-millimeter nut to take the arm off, and then it's probably two 8- or 10-millimeter bolts where it bolts onto the side of the transmission. You'll see okay. it's, got, it's got like a keyway that I mean, you, can't, you can't put it on wrong. Okay. Okay. Um, but just go to your Ford dealership and get a neutral safety switch for, for your truck. Okay. And I'll bet you that'll take care of your problem. Now, I, I question I call it, I guess, because I called, talked to one mechanic, and he told me he thought it was the front, the seals on the drive clutches. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I've, we've seen stuff like that, but usually when you get that there, you can take and uh, you could rev it up and it would, it would go. Um, okay. Where you're saying you can kind of feel it, but it it feels like it's kind of bound up type. Um, that's I've seen more of these. I mean, that's been a real common problem with them, and I've seen it a ton of times on them. Uh, so I would that's the first place I would go. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, seven dude. seven three diesels. I love them. That's that, a big engine. Oh, no, that's those were awesome. They <laughs> that was that was Ford's best deal. They should never quit doing that. Mm. So, but yeah, that's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. So numbers here to get hold of Jay. If you got questions for him, three six five zero six hundred one eight hundred three three two five four zero one star six hundred and U.S. cellular phone. It's the Castle Motor Car Geek Hour. Castle Motors are located at two nine three nine Sixteenth Avenue Southwest here in Cedar Rapids. You can get a hold of them at three one nine three nine six two six nine eight. And they're open till when? What are the hours today, Jay? Uh, today we're open till five. All right. So eight to five, and you know we're right next to the Tyson's, the great big Tyson's West on Sixteenth Avenue. So mm-hmm. um, just look for the the balloons and all kinds of fun excitement there. There's always something going on. Yes. So, well, we got to take another break. Sorry. Oh man, breaks again. It's the last one. Okay. Last one. So last break, and let's get some calls yeah, coming in. Looks like we got a couple coming in, so we'll get to them as soon as we get back here on Six Hundred WMT. Another Beach Boys too. More Beach Boys. You're a good <laughs> man. I'll get some more going. There you go. That way we have some more for next week, so it's not the same ones. Lots over and over. of Beach Boy music. There you go. Yep. Cool. We'll, we'll fill it up. Hey, your lines are full. Well, they not are full. They're still more open. Yeah, we got a few lines open. But, but let's let's take some calls here. Yep. We're gonna go ahead and go to uh, Joyce on the 800 line. Good morning, Joyce. Good morning. I had my car repaired uh, last week with you. Oh, yeah? And I noticed they changed the oil. Yep. I didn't see anything there about transmission oil. Would you have gone ahead in my 2003 rendezvous and put uh, that half a quart of transmission oil in? Um, I will check and see which technician. Um, normally, they they don't do that to just everybody's car. They'll, when people request it, they do. Because some people some people don't like that and some people do, so um, that's a do you preference. Think it would be good for the rendezvous. I think it'd be very good for the rendezvous. I think it's great for every car. So. Okay. Okay. Well, you don't you don't think they probably no they wouldn't that. have done it if we didn't request it. But if you want to stop it, if, re- yeah, if you want to stop Next in, I can. Next time, request it. There you go. Request it, and we'll get that all done for you. What kind of transmission oil do you put in? Um, you, I like the old, uh, the Ford tra- uh, Ford transmission fluid is what I prefer. Ford? Yep. If you want to stop out, I'll do it for you, and I won't charge you anything. How's that sound? Oh, okay. Okay. Stop out and see <laughs> me, and I'll you. take care of it for you, Joyce. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's good to talk to you. Thank yep. you. Nice talking to you. All right. All right. Okay. So, so that's something that they re- they need if, to request. Yeah, if they want if they want us to do it, they'll you need to request it. It's, it's, some people don't. Some people aren't believers in it. Um, I am, and if you want it done, that's I think it's a great thing to do. All right, good to know. Yeah. All right, let's go now to uh, Ron in Cedar Rapids this morning. Good morning, Ron. Good morning. How are you? We are absolutely awesome. How's everything with you today? Good. I got a quick question. Okay. I heard you talk about it before, but I and it sounded odd, and I didn't write it down. But what do you use to clean leather seats? What do I use to clean leather seats? I use Dow bathroom cleaner. 
You know, the little scrubbing bubbles? Yeah. Yep. Dow bathroom cleaner on anything vinyl and leather. Um, if you use that, you'll find it it cleans magnificent and super easy. You'll take out any of the stains, anything you got there. Um, it does a phenomenal job. Now I know it's it sounded odd that and I just it slipped my mind. I'm gonna have to try it. Yep, you have to try it. You'll you'll just be amazed. Now the thing with leather and the vinyl, I want you to also take after you've cleaned it all, I want you to put a leather protectant on it though. Okay. Okay, so, what uh any um, particular brand that's um i like mother's mother's brand makes a nice leather protectant but any of them okay. you know uh tyson's has a couple different types actually i think they got the mothers over there too um tyson's has some real good uh leather protectant in the automotive section there so and i think they actually they have some leather in like a leather wipe a protectant wipe type deal that's kind of nice i've used those before too so just something to uh, keep the leather soft and moist. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thanks for the call this Every, morning. Everybody always looks funny at me when I say the Dow bathroom cleaner, and, <laughs> and then I show them, and it's like, wow. I mean, I've I've had detail shops that I've had clean cars, and it comes back, and it's like, come on, the seat's still dirty. So I'll take my <laughs> Dow bathroom cleaner, yeah. and I spray a spot right in the center of the seat, mm -hmm. and then I just wipe that spot. And then I send it back, and I say, hey, can you get the spot out? <laughs> Usually makes them mad. But. <clears throat> so, yeah. All right. I think we've got time to get one more one phone more. call in here Greg quick. In Iowa yep. City and so let's get to him. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Good morning. What's up? I got a uh, 02 Ford 7.3 diesel. Ooh, I love you. And uh, I, I love mine, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just been giving me the fits. I, uh, the other day I went uh, to start it. And it started fine. I pulled around the shed, went to throw something in the back. And when I went to start it again, it would have been maybe five minutes later. Yep. It would just crank and crank and crank, and I couldn't get it to turn over. And it's not smoking when it when it turns over, so I don't think it's getting any fuel. Um, um, have, you I, I, have, have you had the, the camshaft, crankshaft position sensor replaced yet? Yeah, I have. Actually, that was the first. I always keep a spare in my glove box. Okay. And I actually replaced that, and I've uh, tried uh, unplugging that ICP sensor. Yeah. And it, and I guess uh, I'm not, I'm no expert, but they say if you unplug that, it should default, and then it should start if that's the problem. Um. And I, yeah, I've never seen that on it. Um, how's battery condition? Uh, both good. I mean, they're the batteries are less than a half a year old. Okay. And I actually kept a charger on it while I was cranking it. Um. So they okay. seem like they it's it's cranking over. I mean, to me, it seems like it's cranking over pretty good. Okay. Um, you know what? We're running. We're just at the end of our show here. We'll put. Um, hey, okay. I'm gonna put you on hold. Yep. Get your number, and I'll call yeah. you back here in a little bit, and we'll talk some more about it. Okay. Okay. That okay. Sounds All good. Right. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So we'll put him on hold. Yeah, we gotta go to break again. Uh, We're at the end of the show. End of the show. Bummer. So. Well, if you need to get a hold of me, three nine six two six nine eight. The beautiful Shelly will put you through to wherever you want, whoever you want, and sixteen.